I meant to record the drawing of the Vesper theory stuff, but I forgot. So we'll just pick up here. The, the orbitals used in hybridization comes from the number of electron groups. Three electron groups say I need three hybrid orbitals, and that's going to be S and two Ps. Okay. Now, there is um, there's a, a charge on this atom, I mean, on this molecule, right? Um, and so that means when I count the valence electrons, things might be a little bit weird, right? Which of these has the negative one formal charge? The single bonded oxygen, right? So this, this has a negative one formal charge on it. So nitrogen has how many valence electrons? Five. And in my diagram, it had zero formal charge, and so I'm just going to stick with five. And then here, I'm going to draw nitrogen's orbital diagram and then the hybridized orbital diagram. Um, just due to the shape of the worksheet, it's probably easier to, if you have d orbitals, to put them above. Um, here I can fit these guys in okay. There's S and there's P and five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. And then in the next box I want the hybridized orbital diagram. So I identified that I need sp2 hybridization. So I'm going to have three boxes together. Well, maybe that's not long enough. sp2, and then one p left over. And I have five electrons to put in there. One, two, three. These are closer in energy now, so we're going to put one up here, and then the next one's going to go down there. And then it says circle the lone pairs. Right here, circle lone pairs. There's my lone pair. And when I look over here at my perspective drawing or my Lewis structure, I see that there is a lone pair on that nitrogen. There's space for two oxygen orbital diagrams. Because one is for this NO minus, the oxygen with the negative one formal charge, and this is for the one without the negative one formal charge. And these do get kind of squishy. Maybe they get cozy in here. So this oxygen has a negative one formal charge. This is an ion because there's an extra electron. We have to give the electron to someone. And so the formal charge tells us who to give it to. So oxygen normally has six valence electrons. But I'm going to give it one more because of this charge. The other oxygen does not have a formal charge, and so it has its regular six valence electrons. This is asking for the bond description for that nitrogen-oxygen single bond. And this is for the nitrogen-oxygen double bond. Single bond, sigma bond. So there's going to be a sigma here. The double bond means I have a sigma bond and a pi bond. Pardon me? Is there a difference in those two? Yes, this one has an extra electron. <coughs> it, this is all, I'm going to try drawing this again.
So this oxygen has an extra electron because of the formal charge. So then the bonding descriptions, we're going to look at the hybridized orbital diagram for the central atom and the orbital diagrams for the terminal atoms. And we're going to look at how they could overlap. So here we're going to have an overlap between this. Now this is not, um, you wouldn't be drawing this on your worksheet, but I'm going to have an overlap between the P orbital and one of the hybrid orbitals on the nitrogen. That's going to make a sigma bond, and so that's between nitrogen and oxygen. And on the nitrogen, it's an sp2, and on the oxygen, it's a p. This is a p orbital, that's an sp2 orbital. <coughs> This one is a double bond. There have to be two bonds, a sigma bond and a pi bond. Pi bonds are always between just the p orbitals. And so the sigma bond is going to be one of those from the oxygen overlapping with the other hybrid orbital. So again, this is between nitrogen and oxygen. It's an sp2 on the nitrogen, and it's a p on the oxygen. And then, yes, question. So in the oxygen, the only half-filled orbital is a p orbital. It, yeah, it's bonding with this sp2 and forming a sigma bond. And we have a p orbital from the other oxygen also forming a sigma bond with the other hybrid orbital on the nitrogen. And then our pi bond comes between this half-filled p orbital and this half-filled p orbital. So our pi bond also between nitrogen and oxygen. It's a p orbital on each. So that's a description of the red one, and this is the orange one, and the yellow one, if that helps. If you want me to draw a picture of it too? Would that help? Yeah? So I'm just going to white out this area so I can draw. So on the nitrogen, I have sp2, right? So here's the nitrogen, and I've got sp2. So now it's a little lopsided. You get the idea. And then there's also an unhybridized p orbital, which is it's really sticking straight in and out of the screen really tough to draw. And then I have a night, um, sorry, an oxygen over here. It's going to overlap one of its p orbitals with 
the hybrid orbital on the nitrogen. And this is that yellow bond. So sp2 on the nitrogen and the p on the oxygen. And then I've got another oxygen. It's got two p orbitals. These overlap, and this one overlaps with this one. Then this is my lone pair. So this is my sigma bond. And then my pi bond is a side to side overlap of these guys. And that's my lone pair. This is oxygen. Does that help at all? Anybody have questions they could voice?